Tonight, on a very special episode of Dinosaur Nerds, we're going to take things a little bit more seriously than usual and talk to you about coprolites. Or fossilized poop! All right, well, I'm Jacob. I'm one of the preparators here, and just to give you guys a chance to get a little bit hands-on with this stuff, um, I'd like you to see this. This is actually a okay. fossil. Oh, wow, okay. I don't, I don't know if you guys have had a chance to really get to touch any of the fossils we have here. We've got a few of the, of the touch stations, but this, this is a real thing, came out of the ground in Kansas. Cool. And it's called a coprolite. Very cool. Okay. So, now, when you look at it, do you have any guesses? Of, oh, go ahead and hold on to it. Inspect it. Really, really look at it close. Do you have any guesses on what this might be? Gabe, what do you think that might be? I'm a fossil. Exactly, but I can tell you right now it's not a bone. If you think about what other kinds of fossils are out there. Is it poop? That's exactly what it is. Oh, I had a feeling you were doing that to us. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, what, one of the cool things about this, we know that. So, everything poops. Well, not everything. Every animal poops. Does today. Did in the past. Sometimes those poops would fossilize. And once they have fossilized, sometimes we actually get to find them. And that's a lot of fun because it's always like a, a little treasure out there in the Badlands waiting for you. There's a popular myth about where the term coprolite comes from. See, back in the 1860s and 1870s, there were two paleontologists who had this famous feud. There was uh, Othniel Charles Marsh and Edward Drinker Cope. And they fought publicly and just, they were bitter with one another about everything. And the story in the paleo circles goes that Marsh named, coined the term coprolite to describe fossilized poop. He was talking about Edward Drinker Cope and wanted to put it in the scientific literature. And the truth about that one is it's a pile of, well, you know. So the term coprolite actually comes from a man named Buckland who described it in 1829. He broke it down so in the two Greek words, copros and lithos. Copros means dung and lithos means stone, so he had dung stone. When you combine them together and Latinize and Anglicize it a little bit so it's a little bit easier for us to say, we get the term coprolite. So it's not actually about the scientist Edward Drinker Cope, although that's a hilarious story and it's still fun to pass around the camp. Looking at all of these amazing coprolites that we have here, can you tell me what these are, what we know about them, what can a coprolite tell us? Sure. Well, first of all, all these coprolites you see here were uh, originally found in the Niobrara Chalk of western Kansas. So they're all about 86 to 83 million years old or so. They're all from marine animals that were out there. Um, that narrows down um, what possible animals that may, they may have come from. Some of them actually preserve some of the morphology or the shape of the intestines of the animals that uh, pass them through their system. When you see uh, something like this, you notice that's in a bit of a spiral shape. Now, the spiral shape is indicative of a spiral valve intestine. You find these on living animals today too. Usually fairly primitive fish like uh, sharks, rays, skates, those kinds of things. It's a special adaptation they have in their intestines to give them a higher surface area so they can absorb food much easier. And when you see modern shark poops, this is what they look like, only, you know, less fossilized. More squishy. <laughs> these aren't squishy. <laughs> no, they're not. Now, sometimes you see the shape of uh, the intestines of the animals that do that. Sometimes you actually find out what the meal was that these, uh, these animals ate. When you find um, some of these things, you know, we've jokingly referred to them as cornulites, um, just like, you know, after eating a lot of corn. It's got little pieces of bone sticking out of it. With these, uh, with these bony poops, uh, the cornulites as they were, sometimes you can take them, drop them in some acid to dissolve the, uh, the rock around them and actually figure out what kind of fish or other little critters make up the bony constituent of the poops or basically the prey animals. These animals were the ones that had the very bad day 185 million years ago. So we don't just rely on tooth marks on bones and other marks of predation. A coprolite can tell us a lot about an animal's diet. Exactly, and the best way to find out about that is actually finding an animal with fossil poop inside the specimen. We have one of those! Oh, we've got a fish called Pachyrhizotus that we've actually nicknamed the poop fish. Mm -hmm. So, Pachyrhizotus, a uh, big ugly fish. This one was probably about six, six and a half feet long or so. But when we were excavating it, we found poop. 
We found lots of poop. A big intestine coiled and twisted around on itself inside the body cavity. Yeah, it was almost like this fish and its gut contents were turning to stone on the way down to the seafloor. So that one tells us not only what was in the animal's guts, but the general shape of its intestines, right? Exactly. From this, uh, we can find out a lot about the soft tissue of this fish. We can tell how big the large intestine was, you know, its diameter, its length, its general shape, whether it was more bulbous on one end or the other. All kinds of stuff that you wouldn't be able to find out just from bones. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and as always, stop by and see us at the Dinosaur Resource Center in Woodland Park, Colorado. I just love the idea that at one point, 80 some odd million years ago, this was actually escaping the back end of something that was alive. I mean, wrap your head around that, dude. No.